Hello again, everyone finishing off Kansas City Week, and we're going to talk about the Chiefs of the NFL today. The Chiefs do play in the AFC West, which is a very tough division. Um, you got the Broncos to compete with, who last year played fantastic, 12-4 and record. The Chargers had the exact same record as the Chiefs at 9-7, and and then you got the Raiders at 3-13. and The Raiders really haven't been a relevant team for a decade now, at least in my opinion, and I don't I don't see them turning a 3-13 and record around to competing in this division. I think the Raiders might go 5-11 and or 6-10 and or something like that this year. Uh, we'll see what happens with them. But uh, it's definitely the Broncos' division to win or lose, and the Chiefs and Chargers are obviously going to compete in this division, um, maybe maybe win the division, but I do, like, I do think the Broncos are going to win this division again, and I think the Chiefs and Chargers are going to be fighting for a wild card spot uh, come the end of the season. 9-7 and seven records are, are very respectable. 10-6, uh, and six, you're in the playoffs. Most of the time you're in the playoffs with a 10-6 and six record, rarely do you miss it. 9-7 and seven records, you can't get in the playoffs as well, but if you go 10-6, and six, you're almost guaranteed to be in the playoffs kind of thing, and I think that's... That's definitely a path that one of these two teams are going to get down to. Maybe even both of them. We'll see what happens. I'll start off with the draft for the Chiefs and kind of the pieces they added. Clearly, the cornerback position was something that they thought they needed to improve on. Um, with their 18th overall pick, they drafted Marcus Peters. And then in the third round, with their 98th overall pick, they drafted another cornerback in Steven Nelson. So when two of your top four picks are cornerbacks, one of them being a top 20 pick and the other one being a third round pick, clearly it's a position that you feel needs an upgrade on the defensive side of the ball. Their linebacking core is solid, and I think their defensive line is, is decent as well. So it's definitely an aspect of the game that I think they, they needed to improve on was the defensive side of the ball, especially when you know that 6 out of the 10 games you're playing are going to get, be against the Broncos and the Chargers. So you know you got good quarterbacks and good, good receiving cords for those teams. So you're going to have to find guys that can come in and produce for you. Obviously, they're going to expect Marcus Peters to have an instant impact on this team, being the first round pick for the team and being a top 20 pick. Uh, Steven Nelson, maybe not quite as much. Again, he was the third round pick, so they obviously have uh, high high grades and high hopes for him as well, but he wasn't the first round pick. Um, then with their second round pick, they drafted Mitch Morse, who is an offensive guard, and I think that's a big, big key. Last year, Alex Smith was sacked 45 times, and if you have a quarterback being sacked almost three times a game, that's not going to give him time to make the correct reads find their open receivers, and, and get his completion percentage and yard total up. So I think it's important to bring in a guard. Um, and, and with a second-round pick, you know, it's, you know it's a guard that's probably going to be starting. Um, they obviously have high, high hopes for him as well. 49th overall, so you know, mid-second-round mid pick. Um, Could have gone in the first, maybe. Maybe uh, some teams, if they were looking for a guard, maybe he was a first-round option. Um, but again, second-round pick, obviously they have high hopes for him. And then in the third round, they drafted Chris Conley, with the 76th overall pick, who's a wide receiver, um, and I think that's definitely an aspect of this team that that needs some help is in the receiving core. And from the reports I've been seeing, they're really high on this kid. He's been doing great in uh, preseason and mini camps and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I expect big things from this kid. Um, again, a third round pick for a receiver. Uh, you know, first round and second round is where you're going to see the elite receivers taken. But you can find solid receivers in late rounds, and I think obviously in the third round, 76th overall pick. Um, you're going to expect big things from this kid as well, and I think Conley's going to do that for this team. We'll see what happens with them going forward. Uh, last pick I'm going to mention is uh, Ramik Wilson, who was an inside linebacker they took with their fourth-round pick, 118th overall. Um, interesting choice, I think, I think for me, based on that they have Holly in Houston at the outside linebacker position. Derek Johnson's coming back, but he is coming back off of injury, and he is a little older, so I think that's, that might be why they went with a linebacker in the fourth round. Um, Moega is another linebacker they had who played great for them last year. So it was an interesting pick for me, um, take with the Chiefs taking a linebacker in that fourth round, but we'll, we'll see what happens with him. Again, it's a fourth round pick. It's not like he was a first or second round pick who is there to replace somebody or take the, take the job of a, of a veteran or a player near retirement kind of thing. He's a guy that is a mid round pick, probably going to be on some special teams, probably going to get into, you know, a few of the regular, regular season plays. And that kind of stuff, but a guy that obviously is going to take a couple of years to develop. He's not going to come in and make an impact right on your team right away. Those are the guys that you draft in the first and second round. Um, again, though, with Chris Conley in the third round, I think he's going to be a receiver that makes an impact on this team, mainly because of the lack of receiving core that they have. And that's where I'm going to get with with the offensive side of the ball. And I'm going to start with Alex Smith. Like I said, 45 sacks last year. You got to get that number down. And I think that's why you draft a guard in the second round, because um, obviously your offensive line needs some help for sure. He did have 49 rushing attempts for 254 yards, so we do know he can get some some yards with his legs when when that opportunity and when that scenario presents itself. 65.3 per, uh, 
completion percentage, which is very good. Like I've said in the past, I've talked about other NFL teams. You want your quarterback to have, you know, around that 66%, if not higher. Two-third is kind of the bare minimum, in my opinion. Once they get below that 60% completion percentage, they're probably not making it that much, uh, much of an impact and probably aren't going to be in the league that long or at least seeing that much ball, that many snaps, that much ball possession. Uh, 18 touchdowns to six picks, 3-1 to ratio, very, very respectful number there. When you look at his yards, though, he only had 3,265 yards. And I think that's just because of a lack of receiving core. And I think that's um, that's part of the reason why they drafted Conley. They have brought in Macklin, but I'll get to the receiving core in a second after I talk about their running backs because I think that's definitely the strength of this team. you got Jamal Charles and you got Niall Davis, who last year, uh, both of them had fantastic years for this team. Jamal Charles, 260, 206 rushing attempts for just over 1,000 yards with nine touchdowns. Niles Davis had uh, 134 rushing attempts for just under 500 yards um, with six touchdowns, and they each uh, had combined for 56 uh, receptions with just about 450 uh, yards yards uh, as well. So they obviously can be an impact in the receiving game as well, and I think that's going to be key for this team. Definitely their run game is their strength. Um, when you have a 1,000-yard rusher, you're going to hand him the ball you know, at least 15 times a game. Niles Nile Davis should give him the ball you know, six to eight times a game. And you throw in 20 passes, and I think that's kind of a solid, balanced offense that will make this team successful. Looking at the receiving core, they did release Dwayne Bow, who last year had 60 receptions for just over 750 yards. Um, but then they brought in Jeremy Macklin, amazing receiver to bring in. Last year with Philly, had 10 touchdowns, 85 receptions, and just over 1,300 yards. That's fantastic. He's a great number one receiver. Beyond that, they don't have a true 1B or even a true 2 or 3 option, in my opinion. Jason Avant is a veteran receiver. He's 32 years old. Um, last year, he only had 33 receptions for just under just over 350 yards. So you can you know he's slowing down. Uh, Hemingway and Wilson are younger guys. Hemingway's 26. Last year, he had 12 receptions, 108 yards. Wilson had 16 receptions for 260 yards. So he he obviously I think and he's only 23. So he's obviously going to grow I think and become an impact on this team. Then you got Chris Conley. Hopefully, him and Alex Smith can develop some good chemistry. And he can be a good young receiver for this team going forward. But really, outside of Macklin, you don't have a great number two option. Your number two option comes in the form, in my opinion, of Travis Kels, who's a tight end, who last year had 67 receptions for 862 yards and five touchdowns. So I think he can be a 1,000-yard receiving tight end. That's not a problem at all. And especially with this receiving core, I see that happening this year for him. Because after Macklin, he becomes your number two option. Chris Conley can have a good rookie year. Wilson and Hemingway develop a little more. Avant, you know, can find a way to make an impact on the team, even though he's a little older. I think it'll be okay. But a quarterback is only going to be as good as his weapons, as far as I'm concerned. You, you know, you can't you can't give Peyton Manning this receiving core and expect him to be as great as he is. He, he'll find a way to, to make it work. Um, but Alex Smith isn't a Peyton Manning kind of a quarterback. So Alex Smith needs a very good receiving core, I think to be a very good quarterback. And he has a great option in Macklin. Don't get me wrong. It's a very, very solid option there. But after him and after Kels, it gets very, very depleted. And he doesn't have a lot of solid two and three options out there and three and four options out there to to have an impact on this team, which is why I think a lot of the offensive um, production and success is going to come from the running game with Jamal Charles. Looking at the defense real quick, um, talking about the linebacking core first. Like I said, great linebacking core with Holly and Houston. Holly last year, 59 tackles, 6 sacks. Houston, 69 tackles, 22 sacks with 5 pass deflections. And then uh, Moega, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I apologize if I'm not. He was the team's leading tackler, 103 tackles and 3 pass deflections. He only had half a sack, but in my opinion, when your outside linebackers like Holly and Houston are going to go out there and combine for 28 sacks, uh, 22 of those coming from Houston, obviously, you can afford to have an, another linebacker who isn't necessarily r- rushing the passer, but can cover that five to 20 yard range um and clearly with 103 tackles this this kid has some range um he can find you know the ball carrier and has good ball recognition of where the pass could be going and anticipate the where those plays are headed so that's important Derek johnson's coming back off of injury uh 2013 i'll talk about his stats from that season he had 107 tackles four and a half sacks six pass deflections and a couple picks so if he can get back to that form amazing linebacking core in this team and even if he doesn't get back to that form I still think Holly, Houston, and Moiga are an amazing linebacking core for this team. Quickly with the D-line, uh, you got Howard, Poe, and Bailey are the three guys I'll mention. Uh, Bailey last year, 41 tackles, 5 sacks, a couple pass deflections. 
Poe had 45 tackles with six sacks and a pass deflection. And then Howard had uh, 36 tackles with a sack and a pass deflection. So a very solid defensive line. Obviously, the strength of this defense does come from the linebacking core for sure. When you look at the DBs, so safeties and cornerbacks, um, obviously Peters and, and uh, Nelson are going to have an impact on this team. But I think Smith is a solid cornerback uh, for this team. 50 tackles last year, 16 pass deflections and a pick. Uh, you also have Fleming and Cooper and Gaines, who last year had uh, 26, 21, and 20 tackles respectively and combined for 10 pass deflections between those three cornerbacks. So good good options there. Um, definitely I think Marcus Peters is is expected to um, become their number two, number three cornerback kind of uh, kind of idea this year. I, th- I still think Smith is their number one, but we'll see what happens. And lastly, with the safeties, you got Abdullah, Barry, and Parker. Parker last year was the second leading ta- a tackler on the team, 94 tackles, 12 pass deflections, a sack and a pick. Barry only played in six games, so he's coming back off injury. Hopefully he'll play well for this team. He had 37 tackles and two pass deflections in just those six games, so we know he's going to have an impact on this team. And lastly, Abdullah had 71 tackles with eight pass deflections and a pick. So solid defense, I think, for this team. Offense, the strengths in the running game. Macklin's a great receiver to bring in, but after that, um, you kind of got Kels at the tight end position, solid number two, I think. But after that, the receiving core gets depleted, and Alex Smith isn't that elite quarterback, I think, that's going to take this team past the Broncos and past the Chargers. Good luck, Toe, to the Chiefs this upcoming season. I think they got a solid roster. I think another 9-7, and seven, possibly 10-6 and six record is definitely on the horizon for this team and possibly a playoff berth. And then we'll see what happens if they get to the playoffs and, and we'll see what happens if they don't, if some changes are going to be made um, in that quarterback position. We'll, we'll see what happens. But good luck to the Chiefs this upcoming year. Thank you again all for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at gham614. And I'll be back next week with the uh, Toronto sports team. going to be heading home. My dad's visiting from the from Canada over here in the UK. So I'll have him on, and we'll be talking some Toronto sports. Thanks again. Bye-bye.